spring is one of the most busy seasons for me so i thought let's try something else even though um all those how tours i do are kind of vlogging too because i do it for me anyway and just show you what i'm doing i try something more vlogging this time and take you along for a week and uh just things i'm gonna do uh, in spring when i get the yard ready and we have some fun together it's less of a how to do those things but if you want to know what some of it uh, let me know and i'll make a video to how to do whatever you want me to see in the garden and the yard to do so what we're gonna do is uh planting some plants for the spring seeding some stuff out getting some trees and shrubs uh, cut pulling some that stuff out getting some weeding done getting some cleaning done uh, making the yard look pretty again and um since that's normally getting hot a really dirty thing i always take the oldest clothes i can find for that would be kind of a mix of um flogging day in a life kind of thing i'll try that out you know i made a, a community poll about it so let me know uh, if you like see it being more just hanging out with me while i'm doing things there's always something going on we have a more uh, suburban homestead where we are not allowed to have chickens right now we work on something bigger but i know we have that but we have a greenhouse we do gardening we do stuff in the yard i do uh, foraging baking cooking i can just take you along once in a while with me today for example my boyfriend just went to work we have about three days before the rain hits again so i'm gonna have to be busy and i just take you with me a little bit at a time so uh don't have you watching me weeding all the time or stuff like that but i'll tell you what i'm doing i'll do it and then i show you how it looks afterwards kind of thing right now let me know if you would like to see more vlogging on on and just let's go start let's get started together and for the first task we need some gloves i'll show you a little bit closer why Hi, my name is Karen from Prepared and Sustainable Living. I do videos about uh, gardening, foraging, hunting, fishing, outdoor activities, homesteading, and anything between. So if you like that kind of videos, stick around, press like and subscribe, and let's get that party started. So why do I need gloves for the first? Well, that grass right behind me, we got that for free, I think last year, because it was infested with poison ivy. I'm highly allergic against poison ivy. I had it nine weeks from literally from head to toe in 2021 when it was the first time in the US and it was terrible. So no more poison ivy for that girl without gloves. I'll show you. As you can see, if you're American, you know the rule, free leaves, let it be. So I do need to get that thing out of here. I can't really uh, cut it at the very right bottom and it will come back to either way. So I pull it as low as I can with my gloves so I don't get none of that stuff on me. And get it over with. All right. Next I'm going to do is um, planting those butterfly uh, bushes in the back and cut some of the lilies off that are done for the season. I'll put you in a different, better corner and let you just come along with me. So now uh, that's all done with the fountain sorting again. We we'll go for the oh, I need to transplant some of those horses on another tree. Once this days, we are overpopulating in here, but not this weekend, probably. I'll have a couple more flowers here. I put right here around the stone to make it look pretty. So that's what I'm gonna do next, and then I'll show you how it looks like. Alright, they're all, all right, they're all tended and watered. 
they're gonna look good once they are established I also cut out the lilies here because mainly because they are cut, uh, getting caught in the door and they're flopping all over the walkway but I'm gonna have to find next is a spot again for that one that's a columbine growing in our stones I transplanted it last year the transplant didn't make it but that one seems to uh, do perfectly fine with getting hit by the uh, garage door all the time it's not uh, really useful and it's not really and it's actually uh, a little bit toxic so don't eat it but it's really really pretty and I want to keep it so I'm gonna have to find another spot for it again not sure where yet also got the plant already here and I got two more seniors by the last ones I had what I have left now to plant as that one in that coneflower and a fig not sure yet where to put the coneflower but I definitely know where to put the fig and that's gonna be where that was originally a nice peach the top over the cra uh, crafting died off it was really nice flowering uh, ornamental peach with really nice purplish leaves now it's just the uh, stuff underneath the grafting that's growing and that's not really looking nice it's not gonna give us nothing ever so i'm gonna pull that on and uh, put the fig in put a uh, cornflower in the spot and show you where we at then so i'll bring you back so now let me show you why i always have one of those buckets in my little in my big bucket about for all the stuff I need to work out here. That has to be my flower bed, my herb bed. Uh, the mint over here took over that shouldn't even be in here. That got too big. The salvia got a little bit too big too. So what I'm gonna do now is pruning today some of that off and put that in a dehydrator next. So with the mint first because that needs to get out of here and that needs to get out of here with roots because I cannot have that whole bed full of mint. The mint is all the way down over there and not here. That's the only way to really get rid of. Well, not really. It's still gonna come back, but it's taking longer. Plus, I need the room again where the mint, uh, mint is not supposed to be because I have herbs on the table that are animals that are ready to go in here. So, I pull some out. Normally, I cut the herbs, but since I don't want to Keep that mint in here, I rip it out, and now we go inside and get the dehydrator running again. Still have a little bit of my arm in here that didn't get completely dry yesterday, so that's coming back in here. I uh, don't let the dehydrator run overnight anymore, and I'll get sure that I have the top and the bottom holes open so it, the herbs don't burn that easy since that dehydrator does not have a temperature control so uh, and right now i have the dehydrator almost all day long running and i'm home because i need to catch up with my herbs and at the same time there are uh, plants out there i would like uh, for, to forage for later either for tea or for tincture or for other things so i always right now have plenty of stuff for my dehydrator so i'm gonna have it running all the time right now all day long check it all couple hours get sure that i'm flipping the trays on a regular base because the bottom trays get warmer than the top ones because the heat comes from the bottom so i'll finish that up and get back to you All right, they're both in now. Like with the first one, I cut the wheat mat out for the second one. Put it in the ground with compost. Put the mulch on top. I look a bit droopy right now. 
because they were just planted and it's warm today, so I'm gonna have to water them later today. But once they are established, they're gonna look fine. Rhubarb um, shouldn't be harvested the first year. You wanna let it grow. That's a low acid variety that has a little bit, it's a little bit less uh, sour. A little bit sweet than most rhubarb. Um, in the second year, you normally can harvest a couple of stalks, and in the third year, you can get full harvest. That variety also uh, should not have really a lot of flower stalks, which is great because flower stalks you normally don't need. So it should mainly be edible stalks. I'll water them later and I can uh, wait to show you the rest of the yard and the rest of the plants later. So I really stick to the end. I'm really excited to show you all the perennials that are coming up and especially all the garden plants we have all over the place that are coming up now shows again and you can do a lot of gardening and a big part of your annual vegetable and food supply in just the suburban homestead so stay tuned for that now we have that done I think next we're gonna take care of the porch. So I'll get you over there and see you there. It got all been late yesterday and over here it's getting pretty dark later in the day. So I already got started but I need to open two of them up again because they weren't tight enough. So I'll show you what I do right here and then show you what I did over there before I uh, put you in the top left corner and put you in a time lapse so you can watch uh, me working Alvin. Um, that part is not tied up yet because we're still going to have to replace that uh, gate and the post is going to go from wood to metal too so I'll leave just some left over there so we can wrap that around the post and um, that's only the lowest part of the fence we have some that uh, two inch fence that's high enough but the, rabbit, the smaller rabbits could go in for the two inch fence so we also put a little bit of one inch fence at the bottom just for the smaller bunnies they don't get that high up but the bigger bunnies are, uh, and rabbits are not going to get for the two inch fence neither so i should be we should be fine for that i cannot put the big fence up alone it does better with two people so i'm gonna make that probably tomorrow monday with my boyfriend and um not sure when i put that video probably wednesday or friday we'll see if i have time to edit it tonight i might make it a uh, going out Monday so tomorrow um yeah that's pretty much all about the fencing we did use what we have so we have some fence posts for those I to made uh, longer trips than the eight inches I showed you earlier I make those work really good for the rebar which we have mainly here because that's what we got for free and we just always try to reuse what we have and what we can get for free and make it as cheap as possible. So most is Reba and there are a couple of fence, old fence posts like this one. We use uh, both as we have it. And what I'm doing now is all I actually do is just tie one up at the top. I'll use uh, pliers just because it's easier for me to tie it. You can do it by hand of course. It ensure that I have it really tight. There you go. It's a bit long, so I stack it in here just so I'm not gonna hurt myself when I walk for here later. Then I take a second one and put it at the bottom too. That fence is not going over the ground. The longer piece, the two inch wheel, we're gonna uh, put that around the corner so it's on the ground too for a little while so they can't duck underneath it and then we wait till the grass grows enough i can show you the, a new video when it's done but essentially it's going down and then we take it out for a little bit a couple inches maybe five ten inches whatever and then leave it here till the grass uh, grows through it so it's tied to the ground we did that with the old fence too but that was that um black plastic fence you probably still can see you right here and that shit just wasn't um that shit just wasn't holding good enough the rabbits either chew full or just uh blew full but there were holes everywhere and 
it didn't help at all. Even though it says on the package it's for deer and rabbits, it kept the deer more or less. And the blueberries did just uh, go over, the, lean the head over the fence, but we'll solve that soon. Right now they're leaving in peace, so the blueberries are safe for now. And so we decided we put a, a metal fence up. And I hope that's the last time we put the fence up around the garden until we move on a bigger homestead out of the suburb, either Michigan or Alaska. So I still hope we can have a look for property soon. But suburb and uh, homestead isn't that bad. I'd like to show you in a, uh, in a little bit when I'm done with the fencing how much we can make out of this. Even though uh, here we are not allowed to have chickens, so that's a little bit of a disadvantage. We do plan on having bees, but probably not here, even though we would be allowed to. But then we would have to move them uh, to the new homestead. And since we really plan on getting us something else soon, it's not worth it. We are, Like I said, we are not allowed to have chickens. That's the only uh, disadvantage we have for now. But... Um, <coughs> We have a garden, we have a greenhouse, we make our vegetables, we make our fruits, we make our greenhouse. I'll show you in a little bit. We still have quite a bit of our own. So put you in that core, uh, put you here for now. Fix those two uh, fences. I really shouldn't have uh, fixed that on now. I'll have to do that again now because uh, I need to stop from the corner. But um, I wanted to have an option to uh, first show you real quick how I do it. And I figured here it's easier than over there because over there it's uh, a little bit shady. But it's the same thing I'll do in the corner. Bring the fence down here and then I move you up there. Oh, Polly, uh, I don't think my phone is having enough storage to make you watching me work too long. But leave that row and then I show you when I'm done how it works. Bring you then back and after the fence. We'll go and have a look around the yard and I'll show you an update on our homestead. I'm super excited about that. So stay tuned. So that's how we're going to do it all the way around. My phone is already telling me I'm alone in storage again. So I'll bring you back when I'm around, show you how it looks like, and show you the rest of our homestead. So stay tuned. Now, like promised, let's have a look in the garden and in the yard. Our um, 40 by 80 foot garden is still pretty empty for now. We already have uh, planted the... Uh, Corn right here for your rows. Have one row of squash. We're gonna have about two rows of tomatoes afterwards, two rows of peppers, and uh, mainly jalapenos and some bell peppers, but maybe some other ones too. And then we have about two rows for cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, Swiss chard. We do then have our uh, makeshift trellis for uh, beans and peas. In the back, we already have uh, two rows of potatoes. That reminds me, and I'll show you the garden that I do need to get that potato back in. Somebody dug out a potato. Not sure how that got it out, but it needs to go back in the ground. So take you with me. Like, somebody took the potato out of the ground, so we put it back in, dig it back down deep. Um, some of the 
potatoes are coming up. Where's Tani? We do plan, we don't have it yet, one of the trellises over there in the shade. The other one is on the side of the greenhouse. We put those two grapes up, one here. And one here. I'm gonna put some 2x4s underneath it so it's higher. And then take that for the grapes. Our greenhouse didn't change a whole lot lately because uh, right now we need to get the garden finished before we can finish the greenhouse. We do have uh, blackberries. Do plan on putting a bit something on here and we uh, just got the second of our compost piles. Making a pallet for many, many years compost and works very great for us. We do have the herb bed. I have um, chives, uh, lavender, sage, thyme, myram, oregano, parsley, dill, fennel, basil, mint. I think that's it for now. I want to put some lemon balm in still and some mustard in. Our rose is really growing big this year. I'm impressed. Soon enough, the whole arch is going to be full of it. Just because it's a homestead, not everything needs to be edible, right? And by the way, rose hips, they are really great. So it's going to have a benefit still. Our raspberries are getting much bigger this year. The rhubarb looks much better than it did yesterday after I planted it. It did recover a little bit. Um, our rescue plant is doing much better. That little bit of elderberry roots we uh, took in. I mean, getting close and getting up to my uh, chest. It's not going to flower this year. It's just established and growing big right now. So we do though have some blueberries in here, uh, lavender and yarrow. We're generally put the uh, uh, lavender and the yarrow in here because of the rabbits. They should help keeping the rabbits. Uh, originally the strawberries were in here. Uh, we covered it last winter and then the winter didn't get cold so some of it died off but eh, they are growing in the second bed now. We had originally cabbage in there. Now we're gonna have two beds of strawberries in there. I wish I could tell you of every single perennial I put in the flower bed last year, which one is where, but uh, I know the bachelor buttons are here. I have some butterfly bushes in here. The Rose of Sharon and the hydrangeas do really good this year. Another really bad experience was our sassafras. Nick said it probably got some kind of a bug or something. Well, it died off and he wanted me to dig it out and I said, but honey, it's, the suckers are coming up. So we cut the big one off and gave the suckers another chance and they are growing. So for now they are staying here. Right, the first corner is done. I put some seniors in here to get a little bit of color. Two cherry tomatoes in the back. Got the two butterfly bushes in here. Cut back the uh, lilies. The bachelor buttons are coming really nice now. I love them. Perennials are coming up nice. I got it all weeded. Those snapdragons are actually only annuals, but they are now coming back up the second year. So all I'm gonna do is cutting the dead stuff off now because they're already budding again. Like I said, it's theoretically too cold here for them for to come back. They're only annuals, but hey, if they come back. I'll find it. I'm fine with that. Get a little bit of weed out here and then 
that corner is done. When we moved in, in here at the end of 21, all there was in here was the sand cherry. And right here was a cone. And the concrete slab was there too, just nothing on it. And the horses were there. And now we are getting somewhere. So I'll get that cut back, get that weed out of here, fill the fountain back up and water everything I planted right now. I'll bring you back for the next corner. The last plant I want to show you are the and the sneeze word. It's a really helpful, uh, useful perennial. I did on the other side of the tree. I also have uh, seeded some passion flowers. I hope I can get some passion fruit out of them. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. There's nothing to see right now because it's not coming up yet. It's just about a week. So uh, I'm not going to show you nothing. But um, I think that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed me showing you my little gone. And um, let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see more or less. If you have some other ideas for us, if you uh, like what uh, what we are doing. And I'll have a look if I can get it out for Monday or for Wednesday. Until the next time, if you like that video, YouTube has one up here that they think you would enjoy. And I have a playlist for you. I chose that I think if you like this kind of video, you would like that those videos too. So enjoy watching that. Like and subscribe. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like, how much you, uh, you like or don't like what we are doing, what you have some other ideas or do you want to see more or less and until the next time stay prepared and sustainable